morning and welcome to uh, another day on this journey, 40-day journey of prayer. I'm going to start with a Brene Brown quote, which which I love, and that is that uh, that owning our story and loving ourselves through that process is the bravest thing that we will ever do. Owning our story and loving ourselves through that, that process is the bravest thing that we will ever do. Isn't that a good quote? Um, and here's and here's the good news is that as people of faith, we are not alone in that journey of discovery. Um, this book about um, the sacred call to self-discovery has been about deep knowing of self and how that is connected to deep knowing of God and how those two cannot be separated. And think about that quote by Augustine, grant Lord that I may know myself that I might know you. Um, and this this journey of prayer has been about recognizing and trying to be honest about who we are and praying for God's grace to lead us to, uh, to be um, painfully honest about the process. Our subconscious can do all kinds of wonderful somersaults and headstands about keeping our true self from us and not even recognizing when we're, when we're putting on masks uh, or defense mechanisms and that sort of thing. And, uh, and I appreciate how David Benner has led us to think about who we are, our vocation, our calling, and that being again connected to his quote about it's the face of Christ we are called from eternity to show the world. That is our vocation. Uh, just want to conclude today by um, by talking a, just a bit about masks one final time. Um, Benner suggests that happiness and fulfillment are blessings that come from surrender to the loving will of God. Happiness and fulfillment are blessings that come from surrender to the loving will of God. Both are idolatrous if pursued directly. If we pursue happiness or fulfillment um, without, uh, you know, we, we can do that. We can get wrapped up. And again, we, we mentioned some of the ways that that, that happens uh, specifically named in the, in the uh, temptation in the desert, the power, the prestige, possessions, and those things. We can pursue those things. And when, when we pursue those things, uh, uh, without lifting up our pursuit into the in, into the hands of God, our hands into the hands of God, it can become idolatrous because that becomes the one most important thing, right? Um, and they distract, and they can distract us. I guess that's the big thing, distract us from who we are, our true destiny, our who we are in our truest self, in our authentic truest self. And he suggests, goes on to suggest that our self, that our self in Christ, that's with hyphen, self in Christ. Our self in Christ is a self that fits perfectly because it's completely us. I remember this quote when I was uh, a youth director years and years ago. One of my students was in college that I'd had in youth group and she was now in college. And she wrote a letter to me, and, and the thing that I remember in that letter was a quote, and I don't remember the exact quote, but it was something like, be yourselves. Then at least if someone likes you, they like the real you. Be yourselves. And that's who we are called to be. And 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 uh, we might think of it, our true self is sort of like a tailor-made uh, dress or suit or something that fits us, just us uniquely us, uh, living into who we are in Christ, our Christ in self. Um, and so we take our place uh, in God's grand restoration agenda of making all things new in Christ, says Benner. Paradoxically, our fulfillment lies in the death of our own agendas of fulfillment. This is how I'm going to make myself happy. I'm going to pursue this. I'm going to get that. Oh, I know, if only I am able to get this promotion, get this uh, new, newest, latest technology, oh, this 
uh, piece of clothing, if only, right, then I'll be happy. When we are able, paradoxically, to give up, allow the death of our own uh, agendas of fulfillment, that's when we find uh, our true self. It also lies in the crucifixion of all our ego-centered ways of living, apart from complete surrender to God. So I've got, I'm going to put some, a couple things. If you have a journal and have uh, some time, uh, there's some great questions here. You can journal about, um, just thinking about calling. Maybe some of you have been, you know, hey, I'm doing what I feel called to do. And, but, it, but it can always be good to revisit, um, not necessarily to change course, but just to, um, but help you to live your truth in your calling more deeply and focused. And uh, some of you might be at that point. Others of you might be kind of like, hey, I, I feel like God is calling me to something different or something new. Uh, so anyhow, as you think about where you are uh, in, in life and how you are uh, showing the face of Christ to the world in your unique way, I just post a couple of prompts in the chat. And then uh, I just want to thank you for joining on this journey through this book. We've still got some more uh, days of Lent yet. And uh I'll just leave you with this, this quote by uh, Benner in his conclusion. He says, In Christian spiritual transformation, the self that embarks on the journey is not the self that arrives. The self that begins the spiritual journey is the self of our own creation, the self we thought ourselves to be. This is the self that dies on the journey. And the self that arrives is the self that was loved into existence by divine love. This is the person we were destined from eternity to become. May we become the face of Christ that you have created us to be, O oh God. Amen. God's peace. Uh, you won't see me tomorrow. You'll see uh, Alan Gislason, who will be on for about seven days. And uh, God's peace. Take care.